Hey friends, welcome back. Today is gonna be a busy day and I'm excited you're here for the ride. It is almost 10 o'clock and we've already been out in the garden. We did an entire tour. When we were out there, we did harvest some things. Let me show you what we got. I have some kale here that I already took the ribs out and we're gonna get that preserved up. We need to bag up some sweet peas. We also have some ground cherries I've been snacking on. Some of them have cherries still in them, some don't. These are so good. We have some tomatillos and some green beans and we also got two yellow squash. And I have the dehydrator going with a bunch of basil that we harvested as well. So in my peel box, I got some of these produce bags as a beautiful gift from one of you. And I've been using them and they keep produce so well. This is, re I'm reusing it, I've already used it once. I just kind of wiped it out and then we're gonna go ahead and put some of our produce in it today. Today is Friday and we are moving this coming Monday and Tuesday. And I'm gonna put my green beans and sugar snap peas in the same bag and we're gonna get this in the fridge. The kale I'm gonna put into a freezer bag. I don't really wanna get out my vacuum sealer to freeze the kale that way. So I'm just gonna stick it in a freezer bag and we're gonna freeze this in here so that we can use it at a later date. So what I wanna to do today is work on this kitchen. We have help with the moving process and technically with the packing too, but I have been on a mission to pare down and get rid of and simplify. And the problem is if I have someone come in and pack everything, they're gonna pack everything. And I know that I don't wanna bring everything that I currently own to the new house. I want to donate it. And so what I need to do is go through this kitchen and see what we can donate. I've already taken three full car loads to donation centers, different ones around town, depending on what type of donations they are. And I want to at least do one more just from this kitchen and pantry alone. I think we can do it. And so I just needed to take care of this produce before now we have lunch with Josh's grandma at noon. Once a month, Josh and I go take lunch to Josh's grandma and we hang out with her. So I don't have but an hour and 40 minutes basically to start this project. So let's see how far we can get in the next hour and 40 minutes. I think before we get started, I'm gonna eat these ground cherries. I was gonna save them for Josh, but they're just sitting here taunting me. This is a little ground cherry. They have a little husk, like a tomatillo, and they taste kind of like a pineapple. Mm. There's plenty more out there. There'll be plenty more where that came from, so Josh will be able to enjoy a ground cherry. I ran to Costco yesterday, and I got a bunch of boxes for free. I do have some nice boxes that have lids for actual packing, but if I'm gonna bring something to a donation center, I don't want to have a nice box that I actually paid for to do that. So that's what this box here is for. Anything that goes in this box is for donation. And I wanna go through this cupboard right here. If you were here with me back, oh, I think we did it in like December, we went through and cleaned this kitchen and I said, I want to do that every six months or so. And I never got around to it after that because I knew that we were going to be doing this possible move. And so I didn't want to take the time to clean knowing that I was gonna to have to pack everything and touch everything anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and just start taking things down and going through them. Basically my rule is if I have not used it in the last six months or so, it's getting donated. A lot of this stuff are things that I've purchased secondhand. And some stuff I know that if I haven't used in six months, like some of these serving dishes, I plan to start having lots of parties again. So I definitely wanna keep, that doesn't go in there, serving dishes, because I know I'm gonna be using them. But things like these swing top containers, I'm gonna donate a bunch of these. Kombucha is something I love making. I used to make it so regularly, but I have not been making it in a long time. I don't see myself doing that for a long time. And these swing top, bottles are honestly not my favorite way to bottle kombucha and so I bought these at Goodwill for 99 cents each and they're going to go ahead and go back to Goodwill 
because I don't see myself using them anytime soon. I've been watching and listening to a lot of minimalists on YouTube and getting the motivation and inspiration I need in order to do this. And I think that's exactly what I need to be listening to, to feel the, the urgency to donate things. There is this concept in minimalism or I don't know exactly, but I was watching a couple of videos on it and it's called the silent to-do list. And it's basically that every single thing you own is telling you something, whether that's a negative or a positive message. And things like when I was going through my closet, when I was deciding what I wanted to keep or what I didn't want to keep, I do have things that don't fit me right now. And some of those things or things that I've purchased and I've never worn, but I don't ever see myself wearing it been sitting in my closet for six months so maybe it needs to be donated or passed on and some of those messages that those things are telling me are why did you buy me if you're not gonna wear me and it's like a guilt message or why can't you fit into me and you just get these like negative messages and it's better just to say thank you for being here it's time to go on I don't need to hear those messages all the time and just like these bottles these bottles are telling me, why aren't you making kombucha? You should be making kombucha. Well, I know right now in my life, that is not something realistically that I have time to do. And I'm drinking so little of it if I want it. It's worth just buying one bottle instead of trying to keep up making a gallon of it every two weeks or whatever, because I'm not drinking it. So because I spent 99 cents each on these bottles, I don't even really like bottling my kombucha in these. If I get rid of them and down the road, year or two, six months or whatever and I'm like you know what I really want these swing top bottles to make kombucha for 99 cents I could go buy them again but for now the message that they're telling me is not going to be in my kitchen I don't know if that makes sense but it makes sense to me so that's what we're doing serving dish never used someone else can enjoy it even though we are having help <laughs> with packing and moving. If I touch something, I might as well at least get it put into a box, especially if I know I wanna keep it and I know that I'm not going to get rid of it. I might as well go ahead and not waste the effort of touching it and picking it up. So we might as well get it right into a box. So this is gonna be for things we are keeping like my pasta attachment. Now for a lot of people, if you have a pasta attachment and you've never used it and you never plan to, that might be something you wanna donate. But I use my pasta attachment once a year. We make a lot of pasta and then it lives in here, which is okay. It's okay to keep things even if you don't use them a lot. But if you use them when you need them, then that's great. But it's the things that are just sitting there that you're not using are the things that I am ready to say Sayonara. Here's an example of something that could be hard to get rid of. This is my first pasta machine. Josh got this for me for, I think it was a Christmas gift. And I used to use this thing all the time. And once we realized how much I enjoy making pasta and how much I used it and when I, how much quantities I like to make. Then he went ahead and he purchased me the one for my KitchenAid attachment. And that one's a lot easier to use. And there's no need for me to have a manual one and the one for my KitchenAid attachment. So even though there is sentimental value in this pasta machine, it's not something that I need to hold on to because I have another one that I enjoy using more. So the exciting thing is when I donate this, someone else can enjoy it and possibly learn the art of making homemade pasta. And that can be a beautiful thing as well. But I realized I almost gave away the KitchenAid attachment. These are definitely not what I wanna get rid of. This is the KitchenAid attachment that I want. The Atlas and the attachment in the box is the one I need to donate. I thought that They were all in the box where they're supposed to be, but they're not. So I'm gonna put these ones in the box. Now that would have been a sad day if I realized I gave away 
for the KitchenAid. These are an investment, and to me, because I use them, they are worth every single penny. Now this gets packed away. I just did a Q&A recently, and you guys asked me if I want to make cheese. I do want to learn to make cheese. I have all this stuff to learn to make cheese. I just never got around to it before life got too crazy. So even though I'm not gonna be using those today or tomorrow, I definitely wanna keep those. And hopefully soon, we're gonna to learn to make cheese together. What I've done is I went ahead and I emptied this entire cupboard. I thought it would be easier if I just laid everything out. I was thinking it might be easier to make decisions if I could see everything out. A couple things I know I'm gonna donate is this piece of attachment that goes to my KitchenAid. Never used this one time and I've moved it and I've moved it to two houses. So it's time for it to live or to be gifted off to somebody else who can enjoy it. I have cookie cutters here and I want to keep these, but some of them don't have little containers that they go in. So I'm going to stick all the cookie cutters in a Ziploc bag. As I'm going through and packing these serving dishes, I'm getting excited for what this next year holds of just being able to invite people over and having parties and enjoying getting together with friends and family. This pot here is actually a pot I made in college. I took a ceramics class and I made this pot. I've never used it and it's totally oven safe, dishwasher safe and everything like that. I just have never used it and I think I'm going to attempt to try to make something in it at some point coming up. I've considered getting rid of it but I don't want to until I actually cook something in it and now I'm going to go ahead and we got one box completely packed. I am glad I decided to pack stuff as I was working here because the movers you pay them and the packers you pay them by the hour so the more that I got packed the less they had to do and it just worked out really, really well to do it this way. And I did go ahead and mark really well what it was so that I don't uh, lose this box and I know what I put in there. The next thing I would like to do is go through my utensils and all the different random little items that I have. I really don't like keeping things on the counter. And since I did that reorganizing time back in December I have two of these containers on the counter and I would like to try to pare back enough to where I don't have to store stuff on the counters in the new house if possible I don't know if that's going to be a thing that I'm going to be able to achieve but that is the goal so I'm taking each item and I'm putting the like things with like things so I can actually assess the inventory of what all I have is it really necessary to have 12 wooden spoons and five rubber spatulas, two lemon juicers, two bench scrapers, and the list could go on and on. And so that's why I am taking the time to really go through and do a good inventory and figure out what is something that I feel like I need versus what is just a, a little bit of excess that someone else could possibly benefit from. It really helped a lot listening to the minimalists and the different declutterers online to get motivation and inspiration and tips and tricks on how to go about doing this. It can be very difficult sometimes trying to figure out what is necessary and what is not. And sometimes we have in the back of our mind the what ifs or maybe we'll need and trying to really think when, when do I need 12 <laughs> wooden utensils? If I'm doing a bulk cooking day, which I do do, I can just rinse off a wooden spoon and continue to use it throughout the day. Which ultimately would make cleanup a lot easier instead of washing 12 different utensils. 
I have completely emptied these two drawers now. And what I want to do is pare down. I have kind of laid everything out by likeness. And then we're going to go through and see if we need, do we need both of these bench scrapers? Do we need both of these cocktail strainers? And kind of decide if we need duplicates of some of these things. And over here, I've been collecting measuring cups for a while now because what I wanted to do, I want to keep this measuring cup set whole. That was a wedding gift. And this one whole, that was a birthday gift or Christmas gift for my mom. And I don't want any more than two in my drawers along with this was a wedding gift. I've had these measuring spoons the whole time. I still need to find the one teaspoon measure. And when we like do the dishes and stuff, I might be able to find it. But what I want to do with these two that I have been collecting is keep a set in each one of my dry good containers. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. So the reason I bought them, but they haven't ended up in these containers. So it's time to do that. Here I have what's supposed to be my oat container. I have bulk oats. I just haven't filled this up and I probably won't till we move. So we have oats, sugar, a whole wheat flour, white flour, powdered sugar, and brown sugar. And I'm either going to use a half cup measure or a one cup measure. Here I have a one cup measure I'm going to put in white flour and this is going to live here. I'm going to put a one cup measure in my oats. I'm going to put a half cup measure in my sugar half cup measure in my whole wheat flour, half cup measure in my brown sugar, and I don't have a half cup measure for my powdered sugar, but I don't use this very often, so I think I'm just gonna not worry about that. And my goal is for these measuring spoons to just live in here, so that if I'm just grabbing oats and I just need it for like baked oatmeal or cookies or something, I don't have to pull out a new measuring cup and wash it every time I want to use it. Same with sugar. I can just keep using this same measuring spoon in here. It probably would be better that it's they're all one cup, but I think that I'm happy with this setup. The rest of these, I'm gonna go ahead and donate because I don't need them cluttering up my cupboard or my drawers anymore. I had in this drawer all four sets of measuring cups and that was just way, way, way too many to have to keep track of and manage. So I think it'll be good just to have the two that I've had for years. I've had these for almost eight years. Those I've had probably for six years and I like having two sets, but I'm really excited about having a measuring spoon or cup live in each one of these containers. I need to refill quite a few of these, like my brown sugar. I need to make more brown sugar. I need to refill my oats, but I'm just not gonna worry about that right now. Instead of putting those dry baked goods back in the cupboard, I'm gonna go ahead and not waste my energy doing that. I'm going to put a box together and I'm gonna go ahead and just pack those up right now. I don't plan to do any baking until we move. That is a little bit sad to think, but it's a good thing. I do have in the freezer some more of those banana cookies, breakfast cookies that we made. I have more scones in the freezer, and I did make Josh a baked oatmeal, so we should have plenty of things for breakfast for the foreseeable future. Look how beautifully those fit in there. Perfect. It is 11, 12, so I have about 15 minutes till I need to go. I'm gonna donate this one bench scraper because I have this one and this one's more comfortable for my hand. So we're gonna keep this one. And this is where the real work begins, is sorting through and making hard decisions. 
I think that I would like to make this be kind of more of a regular thing I do instead of just letting stuff accumulate over the years. It gets so easy to have things fall in the back of cupboards, in the back of drawers, and just getting used to that declutterness. And if there's one thing that has definitely helped motivate me is to listen to people that are experts in this area. And I might not be as extreme as they are, but at least I have them in the back of my mind and I'm hearing them talk as I make these hard decisions. And what, you know, what they do might be different than what I do, but it's certainly feeling good, the progress that's being made today. This here is for donate. This here is for keep. I'm really considering donating this piece and this piece because I don't ever use either of these, but I have an entire set right here. So the idea of breaking up this set is causing me anxiety, even though I haven't ever used this in the last probably five years. And I don't use this ladle. I use my really pretty wooden ladle. So this is where the struggle for me does is real. There is this concept that I have been learning about on the Millennial Mom where she talks about a quarantine box where you have a box in your kitchen, dining room, or I don't know, you just have a box somewhere right in your house. And if there's something you aren't 100% sure on, you put it in the box and you let it sit there for an X number of months or whatever it might be, whatever number you put on it. If you don't use it, then you donate it. I know I haven't used this in a long time, but I also have a hard time breaking up this entire set. So I don't think I'm going to break it up yet. I will move it, but we will see when we get to the new house if we end up needing it. It's 11.37, so I am gonna go run to have lunch with Josh's grandma. I did text my sister-in-law and ask her if she wants any of these utensils that I have duplicates of, and she said yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that to her. So far, we have half of this box filled ready for donation. I do have one bag of clothes and a couple other random things for donation. We have a lodge griddle that I have had for over five and a half years. I've used it once, so it's time for someone else to be able to enjoy it. We have this whole box ready for donation. And we have gone through these true two drawers. Those are empty. This is empty. That is empty. And we have more to go through when we get back. I want to tackle this area. I know that I have things that can go to donation here. And I need to tackle, oh, I'm scared, this area. This is my pots and pans. And it is never been super functional for me and i don't know if i'm going to get rid of anything but i know i'm going to pack stuff up well I, I i already can tell that i am going to get rid of a couple things but this is going to be a lot so we'll figure it out when we get back we are back at it and we had a wonderful lunch with josh's grandma what i'm going to do is take out all these pots and pans find the lids for everything and then decide what we need to keep if we need to donate anything Things like this, this Pyrex dish does not go in this cupboard. I'm not sure why exactly it's in there, but it is. So we are going to figure all of that out. I also forgot that I've got a dinner because now it is, what time is it? It's 1.30 and I am meeting some friends for dinner. I don't know if you watched when I was doing some packing and cleaning and serious home improvements on my house because it had gotten out of control and I talk about having a really fancy dinner that I was going to cook for my friends and family today and I texted them a few days ago and I was like what was I thinking can we just go meet out and go get dinner and that's what we're doing because there's no way that I could cook a fancy dinner right now and that is perfectly okay this is one thing Josh is excited about I think I'm going to donate this toaster because um, it was a hand-me-down, and we have had it for a long time, and I think we need a little bit of a new lift on that. I just found a meat therm- oh, this is the one I melted. 
on the Traeger. I put it, I don't think it works anymore. Oh yeah, it does. Well, look at that. I found a really nice meat thermometer that was in the back of this cupboard that goes for the Traeger. Awesome. We'll definitely use that. I definitely have plans to use the Traeger more than I did before. It's a pretty super pot. I've definitely found that it really helps to take everything out of the cupboard and make sure that everything has a top or the matching piece that goes along with it because then it's easier to make decisions and actually see what you have. Like I was saying earlier, this is where I found that meat thermometer and there was just things in this cupboard that I just didn't even know were in there. And it's hard to manage my things when I don't even know what things I have. And this was really helpful. And this was one of the tips from the Millennial Mom was take everything out and do inventory. This is where we're at. I am starting kind of a Goodwill pile here. I don't ever use this teeny tiny pot. This is a lid to something I don't use anymore. I am question marked about this toaster and I already have three other pie plates. I don't need this one because this is purple and I'd prefer to keep the clear ones. I'm starting a stack of my Pyrex because I'm cleaning these two cupboards out and keeping this, these two Dutch ovens for sure. I like this pot, love this pot. And I'm gonna keep my brazing pan, my Le Crusade brazing pan, but it is dirty in the sink along with my all clad frying pan is in the sink. So definitely keeping those right there. But I do wanna to try to get rid of a few things right now. So now I'm going to move down here because I know there's some donation stuff in that cupboard. I have been meaning to go through this cupboard and get rid of stuff in here forever. And today is the day we're gonna do it. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to get rid of our juicer. We have used it, I think Josh and I have been married almost eight years and I think I've used it a total of two or three times in those eight years. And so it is time to say goodbye to it. Silicone mat doesn't belong in here, shouldn't have been in here this whole time. An old foil pan, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then... We do have some Vitamix bottles and I'm going to go ahead and put the lids to these blender bottles on top of them so that we can keep these together and we don't lose those. This goes to the Vitamix as well, so I'm going to stick those together. But this juicer and this blender, I don't know why I'm keeping this blender I bought at Goodwill for $5. I don't know why I'm keeping it. I even broke the top of it. Their blender part doesn't even work to that anymore. So it's just things like that that I would have had so much more space to have things organized if I had gotten rid of these things earlier. But no time like today to go ahead and take the effort to get rid of this juicer because someone can benefit from a juicer. Someone probably would love to have a juicer. And this juicer works really well. There's nothing wrong with the juicer. It's just we don't use it. It's bulky and it takes up a lot of space. Man, what a waste. Almost 90% of the stuff that was in this cupboard on those shelves were stuff that could be donated. And I could have used these shelves for a better purpose, but we're taking this lesson and moving it and going to apply it to the new house. Hopefully, I am going to try to stay on top of these types of things a little bit better. But better to do it today than tomorrow, I guess. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing in here. A lot of this stuff I do wanna keep, so I wanna get a box out that I might as well go ahead and just put these things in a box while we're touching them because they are things that I do use quite frequently. Well, I shouldn't say quite frequently. I don't make cake that often, but these are cake pans that I definitely want to keep because I do need cake pans when I want to make cake. I do like to make a bundt cake. They're the easiest type of cake to make, so definitely going to keep our bundt pan. And I do like to make cheesecake at the holidays, so I am going to keep my cheesecake pan. 
This cake pan though I can donate because it's a different size than my other two and I don't need a really small random cake pan. This goes to the juicer so that can be donated. And this was half of a salad spinner and the rest of the salad spinner broke. So I've been using it as a bowl, but I have plenty of mixing bowls, so we can donate this as well. Oh, I see. I just found three more cake pans. These are not my cake pans, the one I just stuck in that box. Maybe I borrowed these and these are my mom's or my mother-in-law's. So I'm actually going to text a few people and ask them if these are their cake pans because they're not mine. So I'm not going to donate those ones quite yet. Where do these keep coming from? I have no idea where all these cake pans are coming from. <laughs> these are not my cake pans. <sighs> when we did that big clean out in the kitchen like six months ago, we never touched these cupboards because we just, it got late and we never got to it. I probably should have gone through these cupboards. Now this is a bunt pan that's really, really pretty. I've used it one time. It makes really beautiful pound cakes and I would love to keep it but I've only used it once and it was um one of my friends she was donating it to Goodwill and she asked if I wanted anything out of her Goodwill pile and so I took this and I used it and I made really beautiful individual pound cakes but I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and donate it now because it I got this when we lived in our last house so it's been here for two and a half years and I have not used it so to the donation for someone else to enjoy to make some really, really pretty pound or bunt cakes. I think just having my one large bunt pan will be efficient or sufficient enough for me. Okay, I need to go text a few people and ask them if these are their cake pans. going to be heavy so I'm going to have to put light stuff on the top because that's my two Dutch ovens in there. So far we have four boxes for donation, a bag of clothes and some other random things and we still have a long way to go. There's a lot more stuff in this kitchen I know we can donate but we are making serious progress and I'm going to start bringing some of this stuff out to the car. One thing I'm gonna get rid of are these extra white plates and white bowls. For our wedding, for wedding gifts, we got this china, and this is called Nordic Color Wave. And we, over the years, uh, I shouldn't say we, I have broken four bowls, two plates, and two mugs. And these are, were, are kind of an investment. And so since we didn't have very many bowls, and I have big parties and so I needed more plates. I went to Goodwill and I bought some white bowls and white plates and I have a whole bunch of plates up there. Well, Josh and I, since we're gonna be moving to the new house, we plan to have big parties again and I want all my dishes to match. I decided to go ahead and invest in replacing the dishes I broke plus adding to it so I have a full set of 12 plates, bowls, um, the dessert plates and I have the mugs I actually found the mugs at Goodwill which is shocking and so I bought these bowls for 50 cents it was two for a dollar and I bought these plates and those other white plates for 99 cents so I'm gonna go ahead and donate the plates and bowls back to Goodwill so that all of my plates and bowls are gonna be matching and I'm pretty excited about having matching plates and bowls again and so that's what these are gonna be going back to Goodwill so someone else can enjoy them. I definitely enjoyed and used them. I had probably five or six big parties where these came in really good handy and I'm glad now that I'm gonna be able to pass them on to someone else 
and I am going to be able to have parties with my matching dishes. While I'm packing up the plates, I also have a hand mixer here. This is a hand mixer I think Josh got as a hand-me-down when he moved out and moved on his own. And he, we have not used it since we got married because I, when we got married for a wedding gift, my mom bought me my KitchenAid. So I'm gonna go ahead and donate that so that someone else can enjoy that hand mixer. I love that hand mixer, but it's just not something we need anymore. The progress we made is we emptied these two cupboards and we have this box just starting to be packed. These two boxes are basically packed. This one's packed. This cupboard's empty. This cupboard's empty. And this one is empty as well. We never got to the coffee mugs and travel mugs in here, but we will get to it tomorrow probably. And the biggest thing is I cannot believe my car is completely filled yet again. How did all of that stuff fit in here? And I know, I know there's more stuff that can go to the donation center because there are travel water bottles and travel coffee mugs that Josh and I haven't used in six months. And some of them, it's been longer than six months. So great progress is made but there's definitely more progress that can be made and I'm just glad what we got done today I am gonna go run to the donation center right now before I go meet my friends for dinner I'm really glad I don't have to worry about dinner tonight I actually did thaw out two freezer meals so tomorrow is Saturday and we've got a meal that we can have for dinner tomorrow and I do have some leftovers for lunch for us and like I mentioned earlier we've got breakfast taken care of and then we do have for Sunday, uh, we have food ready and thawed and I can just cook that up really easily. Josh is taking the next week off because the movers are gonna be here to finish packing whatever I don't get packed. I am glad that we have that as an option. They could pack my entire kitchen, but the problem is if they do that, they're gonna pack all the stuff that I am planning or don't plan to keep. And so they don't know what I want and what I don't want. So they're just gonna pack it all. It's gonna end up at the new house and then I'm gonna to have to deal with it there. So I do wanna go through everything and make sure that whatever is packed in a box are things that we actually want to keep. But I am really glad that we have that kind of safeguard that if I don't get to something, then they will finish packing it for me and they will be moving on Saturday and Sunday. The painters are still painting up at the new house. They've been painting all week and they are gonna be painting, oh, I'm sorry, the movers are gonna be moving on Monday and Tuesday. So we have Saturday and Sunday to finish packing and going through and purging and doing all those things. Movers are gonna be packing on Monday and Tuesday and the painters are at the new house. They've been painting all week, started on Tuesday. They're there every single day and they will be there Saturday and Sunday to finish the job because they have another job to start on Monday. <laughs> and so it's just crazy all the stuff we've got going on. And right now I'm gonna go enjoy some time with my friends. I'm gonna relax and have a great evening. Thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me as we organize. I hope this was motivating to you to maybe go through a couple cupboards or drawers or something and something that's been stressing you out, cleaning and purging and getting rid of those silent to-do lists or the, the things that are talking to you that are giving you stress. Let's get it out of our house. And so I hope you guys are having a great day. If you wanna watch more of my videos, I'll put some right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.